angular momentum. In a closed system where net external force equals zero, linear momentum is conserved. And if we applied a net external force for a certain amount of time, it was called an impulse. Remember, that was your change in momentum. And it changes the linear momentum of the entire system. So continuing our analogies for rotation, all right, in a closed system where net torque equals zero, the angular momentum of the system is conserved. If an external net torque is applied for a time, it's going to be called an angular impulse. This one does not have a special letter. We're just going to call this one delta L. Hold, bear with me for a moment. Okay, and this external net torque or this angular impulse changes the angular momentum of the system. Okay, we're going to jump straight to our equations. Remember in translation, momentum was just P equals MV. And P and V are both vector quantities. And our units were kilograms, meters per second. Impulse was kilogram meters or Newton seconds. And the variable for impulse is a capital J. And it was equal to the net force applied times the time it was applied for. In rotation, angular momentum, all right, the units are a little different. They're kilogram meters squared per second. All right. And the variable that we use for angular momentum is a capital L. I don't know why I could not find a good answer for you on the internet, and I don't know. So for now, we'll just go with it. All right, bear with me. But L equals I omega. Remember, I is the rotational equivalent of mass, and omega is the rotational equivalent of velocity. And angular impulse is measured in kilogram meters squared. All right, and it's the same format as translational impulse, all right, where it's the net torque times the time applied, but we don't have a special variable for it. We just call it delta L. All 